for um black businessmen. Okay. Uh, I, so it's, it's like I found it yesterday, mm -hmm. and I took care of it um six o'clock this morning. What? So Congratulations! You move fast. You, you taught me well. Hey, <laughs> I love it. You ain't playing. You ain't playing. It's time to get that money. It ain't. It ain't nothing to what they say. It ain't nothing to it but to do it. That's some real stuff. It, so that's that's me. a real saying. It might sound kind of cliche, but that is a real. That's a real listen. It, it, at least we got to get started. Just get to it. So right. I, I'm super proud, excited. Kudos to you. You know what I'm saying? That's all we could do is throw it out there. And if we throw enough of them out there, something's gonna stick. Right. Something's gonna stick. So kudos to you, Dr. Price. Yeah, thank you. And um I so actually I was um today I was in um Chester, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I mean with a couple of um business professionals because I'm trying to um get space in the Chester, South Carolina, Fort Mill, um, uh, Lancaster area. Nice. It's, it's a huge need, you know, in the South Carolina areas, you know, for the computer training and business training. Okay. Do you in the places that you are looking to get space? It might be helpful to partner with some councilmen. Do you know who the council person is over the areas that you're looking to uh, open up space? No, no ma'am. So um, the, the, my notes is upstairs, but um, it'd be definitely helpful to do the do the homework and see who is over that district, so they could be in an additional plug because. That's a benefit to, you know what I'm saying, something that they can push for, you know what I mean? And and they can kind of let you help you kind of navigate that space. You know what I'm okay. saying? To know what's doable and what's not, or who should talk to, you know, to kind of get past some gatekeepers. Okay, so find out who the uh council contact person is. Yeah, who the council particular... person is. Usually if you go online on the city's website and you if you know the district. That it'll tell you who the person is, the council, the councilman or councilwoman over that district. They Thank everybody you. has a district that they cover and that they advocate for and things like that. So um, you should know who covers that district. Well, at least first find out what the district is, and then you'll just go on the website and and look and see who covers the district because it will be on the city's website. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm excited to see everybody. We're in day two. So if you were actually doing some homework, because some of you guys were and will hit me up, even if you just got registered yesterday on SAM.gov, that was one of your home, pieces of homework, was to go on SAM.gov and actually start the registration process. Now, it, it could be cumbersome and you say, hey, Shay, it was just too much for me to tackle in one day. I wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. You know, at least if we got the email and we got an account, then we are still on our way. So I'm excited if you got that far. Super excited if you got that far. And if you actually thought about what's your vision, because that was another piece of homework that you had to do. Really think about what impact you plan to make with some money. What was your vision? Because tonight I'm going to actually have you think about what's the cost of your vision. So you got to have some kind of an idea, you guys, as to what you plan to do. Uh-oh, hold on. I was. Let me go back to that. You got to have some idea of what you plan to do so that, you know what I mean, you can know when it's time and you're not trying to create at the time, because depending on the time that you find this grant application, you can have 30 days, three months, or three days. You don't know at one point that you find the information that the deadline is going to approach. Because if you're lucky, then you're at the beginning. But you're not going to always be at the beginning. You might, somebody might hit you up and tell you about a grant and the deadline is in three days, or the deadline is tomorrow, or the deadline is Friday. And if you have zero information put together and zero of this stuff that we need, then it's going to be a lot for you to have to be putting stuff together for a grant. So one of the things I want you to look at today is I sent, I told everyone to make sure that they were in the fully funded. So if you are in, hold on, let me see what that looks like. 
if you're in fully funded, that's on the website. I put this group back in. Um, if you can see my screen, I put this group link back in the uh, back in our group. Now, in this group here, I'm going to make sure that I add different videos. If you guys have the goal setting template, um, I'm going to make sure to also add a video so to help you kind of navigate that template because I'm not sure if you some of the areas you fully understand or if you might have some questions. So I'm going to put a little a video in that, and I'm going to also put another link for those of you who did not get to buy it. It's actually still on sale, and if you didn't win it, I need you to engage. Because they, those winners who won the goal setting, the grant goal setting template, they won it because they were intentional. That's it. They didn't do no special stuff, but show up and do exactly what they intended on do, participate. That was it. So if you participate, like posts, respond when I ask questions, then you get things that you need for this um, challenge. Um, if not, then you'll just have to work along um, in the wins. <laughs> So, or you can buy it. I have no problem with you buying the things that you need. You know what I mean? I will take your money gladly. So <laughs> um, one of the things that we have, I wanted you to look at. So we're on day two. This is in the fully funded group. So we're on research today, right? We're on research. And that's us really like looking for funding. You know what I'm saying? Because even though we're getting things together, stuff that we need, we really got to know where to look for grants. So one, of, if you got the cheat sheet, then you kind of know um, where to be looking to start. Now, some of the things on your cheat sheet um, will tell you, let's see, let's, let's, let's look at this uh, cheat sheet because it got a lot of information. A lot of information here. And on our cheat sheet, it also has, because I know, hold on, guys. Number two on our cheat sheet is documents is our mission statement. And I'm going to kind of go over this list, even if you don't have a cheat sheet, because I really want you to know um, some of the things. Hold on. Okay. So we talked a little bit yesterday about Hello Alice, right? We talked a little bit when it comes to looking for grants. We talked about Hello Alice. If you go on there, a lot of stuff is free. Some of the things will have a small a, a small price for you to pay. Not all of them, but some of those, um, hold on a minute. Some of them will have, and that's independent. So this is not Hello Alice, but the company might say, take pay $50 to apply for this grant. That's just their choice. That's just their choice. Um, so you would do helloalice.com. Another one is grants.gov. Now, anything with grants.gov, 90% of it, you are going to have to have your SAM.gov registration. So let's, let's look at SAM. One of the things about grants.gov is that if, I, this is really education training. Any If you want to do overseas, things like that. I like grants.gov for the larger money um, when it comes to applying for grants. They give you a lot of information, tell you how to go about things. You see it says grant search, grant policies, agencies. They talk about scams, just different things like that. Now, you can always look by look for grants by keywords. So the keyword, like if we're looking for Dr. Price, would be computer training. Or, and remember, when it comes to the bigger grants, we want to make sure that we have an education component, a, a youth component, something that's going to have an impact connection to the community. So always think about that side of it when you're asking the government for, um, when you're looking for the larger money, because those are the ones who are going to give you the larger money for some kind of an impact, redevelopment, community uh, enhancement, something of that sort, where your private fundings will say, hey, I got money to help you upgrade your lobby, upgrade your signage, upgrade this. It has a more of a private aspect, even down to marketing and things like that. So private industry, if you're looking for wages, marketing, some of the different things that you might need just for um, expenses to grow, 
then you might want to look more in your private sector. Um, if you're looking for um, something to make your more of an impact, to run your comp, your programs, to actually um, broaden your business, then you might want to, then you can look in the larger sector. And it just depends because this is not just one way. Okay. So we put computer training in, and when you see, this is, I mean, we got different countries, everything. And on the side here, it'll say forecasted, meaning that it's coming up or stuff that's already posted, stuff that's closed. You can always go into the archives to see what has passed already. Then it always tells you right here on the side. If you click the grant, click the grant, it tells you what are grants. And then if we keep on scrolling down, whether it's towns, governments, you got... If you want to go to cat, so this on this side it allows you to narrow your search down. If you want to stay for grants right here in the U.S., if you're looking for, because they have companies who give to the U.S. companies that are in the U.S., it's just so much here. So, but again, this is your larger funding. Okay, this is your larger funding, and even if sometimes you can find things that you would never think that you would be applying for in this space right here. But this is just one of the spaces. Um, grants.gov. And again, you will need to have your sand.gov to apply for your grants.gov stuff. Now, when it comes to um, um, small business SBA stuff, they have a lot of different grants that are, I mean, it can go from women owned to small business enterprise. They have grants that are specifically for their certification people, and then they just have grants for people in general. So you would have to go on the SBA's website, look around. And again, it helps if you go here and if you are certified. So my goal is, and hopefully your goal too, is to make sure that you get certified. Um, and whether it's woman-owned, uh, 8A, which is small business, veteran, any of those things, and use some of these tools that are here for, um, for your businesses. Because the Small Business Administration, that's what SBA stands for, they are here to help small business. So they can really tell you where funding is. So if you're out here looking for funding and looking for small grants and micro grants, $5,000 and stuff like that, SBA helps you find those kind of grants. You know what I'm saying? Then that's what you like. You want micro grants, little small grants that you would pay back. Um, sometimes you don't want the bigger grants, especially if you're not real uh, good with managing money and you really you I mean you don't have you don't have somebody helping you spell the plan out so it just depends on what it is that you're trying to do um, you might really take a look into the SBA's website um, and apply for some of the things that they have available register your business but again we want to get this sam.gov uh, registration that's like one of those things that we want to do we want to come to the table with sit with uh with them so we have all of our eggs in the bucket when we come to the table with um, SBA. Now, Foundation Center is now candid. They used to be, it used to be when you want the good stuff, like the ones who are by, maybe if you're Can't here, hear you. energy and the ones that are by companies and Can't hear you. all your good, good grants, that's no the sound. Foundation Center. No they sound. used to be, please mute your, uh, mute your mic, please. Um, those those grants are by um, they they have you go to the to the library. Now you can click candid.org, see how much access you can get. But at one point you can only access these grants through the library. Only only way that you can access them was through the library. You had to go to the library. That was the only place they would let give people access to their funnel was through a software that was in all the libraries around the country, but they would never put it in a general population. Um, when it came to philanthropists giving money, stuff like that to small businesses and organizations and stuff like that. Um, so Candid is definitely a good tool to look for money and grants if you're looking for funding. Um, and again, they're in the... Um, they are inside the <laughs> library. So you want to make sure. Hold on. Hold on.
why I said I couldn't hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me, you guys, because somebody told me they couldn't hear me. You can hear me? Okay, cool. Okay, okay. All right. So you want to make sure if you do use Candid or any of them looking for funding um, that you, you you probably can go through this route, but you might want to try the library. Um, and that's definitely one of the places. So real quick, before we go into the next thing, we are working on a proposal or something to introduce to a grant because that's what it's about. Some, some people will say have a good business plan. Some people that have a good proposal. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two. So if you look real carefully, I'm going to show you a business plan. This is a business plan. It has our mission. It has our company values. It has a company vision, goals, milestones. You know, you got to tell your milestones, what you see yourself by the first, the fifth year, the first year. Our milestones start with year three because we already been in business at the time this was written. So we did a milestone from year three, year five. Year 10, it has your target market, your competitors, your legal structure, your services here, any special benefits, any unique features, product, production delivery, clients, your description of your services or whatever you sell. We offer programs as well. So those are there, our classes and workshops. There's always a SWOT analysis inside a business plan, your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats that, um, that may arise in, in that business relationship. Product, service, features and benefits, target customer again, our demographics that we serve. Talks about your competitors. They wanna know that you're thinking about other people that surround you. And it's not just I just I'm the only one who's doing this type thing. So at the time, you know, we're we're our competitors that look like us were Avid and, and Hyg and their other co-working spaces. So we have to put the benefits, the, you know, the strength, the weaknesses, the importances on certain things. All of this is in the free template. This template is in your fully funded group. So if you're wondering how this this lines up and you want to have this for yourself. Just go to the fully funded group and um, go to the fully funded group and actually download this template because you can actually fill in the blanks. It has a marketing space. Now, when it comes to marketing, you got to know what kind of marketing you're going to be doing. Online, print, radio, all of that is inside your business plan. Your marketing plan and your marketing cost is inside your business plan because this is a well- thought out business plan. So now this is a business plan. This is this is somebody saying, hey, I thought it out. I got my idea out of my head. I know what it looks like. I know it. I see it. This has nothing to do specifically with a grant. This has nothing to do with a grant. A grant proposal and a business plan, two different things. So if someone is asking or trying to sell you a business plan, you should have a business plan, but a grant proposal is built from a business plan. So let me show you what a grant proposal looks like. This is a grant proposal. It says grant proposal master. So what, what that means is when I start doing different grants, I'm going to base everything from this master and then I'm going to change it as it goes. So what I'll do is I'll probably duplicate this and then I'll alter it based on the grant that I'm writing. So it has our information, um, our fiscal year, our website, a mission statement. That is what everyone needs to have. For profit or nonprofit, you need to have a mission statement. Something that sums up your business like a very small introduction. So that is gonna be your homework tonight. I need everyone to have a mission statement. You need to have a mission statement. That should have been last night's homework, but we're going to make sure 
everyone needs to have a mission statement. And if you have one, I'm going to put it in the group. I need you to paste your mission statement in the group so that I can see it. So our mission statement is, the mission of Business 911 Small Business Center is to support, educate, and empower low-income and minority communities through entrepreneurship, education, and education by providing small businesses with the tools and resources to sustain for the long haul. This is the thing. Your mission statement should be something that you can remember, not paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff. So it got to be quick. Five sentences tops. Do not give a whole long thing mission statement. It is like your introduction, your quick pitch. OK, so we want everyone to make sure that they have an a mission statement and it's going to be pivotal to your bonus that you actually post this mission statement. And if you have one, kudos. Now we have a proposal cover letter. So this is me to the person. I'm sending to the grant manager about business 911, who we are, we work to improve X, Y, Z. Um, we are pleased to submit this proposal to X, Y, Z. I'm introducing myself in this introduction and I'm looking for a request for a certain amount of money. So this is me asking for a certain amount of money from a client. And you see here, I'm also giving a little bit of data. So I not only say a little bit about me in the first paragraph, but I also give a little bit of data about who I serve and the pain points that, I, that, I, that I'm serving. So I talk about the economic instability. Um, according to ABS, that, you know, in 2019, that there's approximately XYZ minority-owned businesses and blah, blah, blah. I give a little bit of information. And then I have them ask them to contact us. Now, in this proposal, again, I give a summary about the business, about me, where my entrepreneurship stems from, and what I do with the entrepreneurship, the history of what I'm doing, a need statement. My need statement is really data because I, I need to share with them why I need this money. So I need to really show why this makes sense. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, to, to data, because people want really information, not just your feelings. Facts doesn't, facts makes the people move. Feelings don't make them move. So they need data. So we want data. And then my organizational background, which is like a capacity, uh, capacity. So it talks about who we have served, what we have done up until this point. So I, I'm sharing what we have done, the impact that we've made. We've been open for 20 years and what we have done up until this point. Then I talk about, excuse me, my target, who I plan to target, what, plan, what businesses and my description of my program, because I need to be able to explain why I need this money, right? And my objective of once I get this money. And then to achieve our goals and objectives, these are our clients. Who our clients are, owners of small businesses, you know, things like that. What am I going to do? Long-term goal. This is my long-term goal. And I'm going to put them in different programs and blah, 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 blah. And my implementation plan, because I have to have something that even after I put them in this program that has to track long-term success after the program. They want to know that I thought about it. It's not just get through my program and then once it's over, then what? So I'm putting them in bi-weekly classes. We're going to check up with them quarterly and meet up. We're going to do, we got to think about the journey. They want to know what that journey looks like inside this master. Because I have a board, they want to know how involved my board is. How we plan to execute. How we plan to sustain it. So this is your grant proposal. Because they want to know, you asking people to give you 20, 30, 50, $100,000. They want to know where, wh what's the plan? What's the journey? Explain to me what the journey is. Not just right now, not just how you'll spend it, but how you'll maintain it and continue to maintain it. So I want you to think about that 
where you're thinking and, and it's helpful to have the business plan because you can pull from it, but that's not going to be the only thing that you're going to need. Okay. You need a proposal. It's a whole introduction on something specific. And then if you have different programs and different things that you need, then you can continue to have different proposals because you, you might say, I just need an upgrade of my lobby. I might, I might need a new truck. And with this new truck, I can then get this, this make more deliveries because I, I can only now with my hoopy stay within a 15 mile radius. But if I get a truck, I can serve 60 miles out. They have XYZ homes over here I can deliver to. You have to make that make sense when it comes to the grants. So always think about that when you're looking for the funding. All right. So, and look at this. If you can take a look at this, when we have business plan, here's the set of financials. So when you say, let me speak to a lender. Let me speak to a bank. If the, the people say, well, let me see the financials. This was a hell of a dream. This was a hell of a vision. This was something I think it is spot on. The community is going to love it. Let me see the numbers. Because big corporate companies, six-figure companies, the companies who we want the money from, the real money, they want to see the numbers. The, the tear jerking and the heart strings are wonderful, but they want to see the numbers. And the numbers, this, this is financial. This is what a set of financials look like. And in fact, hold on to me. So, hold on. All right. So if you look at this, this spreadsheet, at the very bottom, it has, you've got startup financials, and our startup financials comes from inventory, if there's real estate, the building, monthly expenses to the phones, if people got GPSs, internet systems, our legal expenses, our insurance. You see, this is nothing but numbers. This is what they want to see. They want to see that you've thought about all of this, right? And you've put it into some type of a spreadsheet. Then if you have financials for year two, inside of this set of fi financials, if you had employees and dreams, then your employees got raises. They're in this. Your monthly expenses are in this. If you had planned to redo that, that asphalt parking lot, because it, when you first got and got the building, you couldn't afford it, it's in this. So all of these are the numbers insurance, employees, everything, because they want to see that you've thought you're not going to just get this money and say, you know what? I still need $20,000. I really thought I had, I needed, I had enough. That was going to be enough, but it wasn't. And now you can't even open it. You can't move because you don't have enough. So that's why companies, when they open, they have the staff paid for, for a year or two. They have everything. They're not struggling trying to, to do Rob Peter to pay Paul because when they got the money, whether it was loan money or grant money or government money, they automatically ask for everything up front. That's when you know what your financials look like. So you see at this last one it has here, wages and labor. So we have here, look at this, from an office manager, this is a guy's trucking company, to a dispatcher, to a company driver, to a mechanic, to an assistant mechanic. Because we got to make sure that we know what we're spending. So you got to make sure that you know, and if this is not your lane, that's fine. Find someone whose lane it is. It's my lane. It's someone else's lane. Someone knows these numbers. And you have to have them when you're looking for the larger money. Now, if you out here just want $1,000, $500, stuff like that, none of this really matters. <laughs> but if you're wanting better than 5K, 10K, 20K, 100K, 2.2 million, especially when it comes to things that buy buildings and things like that. You have to have all this. You can't really believe that somebody is going to give you a half a million dollars and you don't have this kind of information to provide them. It doesn't make sense. So you have to make sure that you think about this. This is something to think about. So real quick, because I'm not going to keep you, we're going to refer back to the grant 
um, the Get Grant Ready template. Um, some of you guys got the goal setting template. Kudos to you. Hold on a minute. All right, hold on. All right, so we're in day two. Hold on. All right. So in day two, we have just you breaking down your project timeline, activities, creating a project. I guess we really still got to think about what you need the money for. So hopefully if you got the goal setting template that can help you create that. If not, I need you to sit down, think about it. Programs, mentorship, whatever that looks like to help you expand because sometimes you might need to create one thing to get something else done when it comes to funding. So if you creating some type of a program will help you get more vans, more staff, more this, more that, then sometimes you have to do certain things, you know what I'm saying, to be able to get this a different kind of money. Now, there is different kind of, like, they have different people that have different kind of um, grant lists that they sell. You, there's a guy called Grant King on Instagram I've seen. He sells a lot of grant lists. You could be 200 grants for $15, stuff like that. You can have all the grant lists that you want to in the world. But if you don't have the proper information to put inside those lists when they say to apply, then again, all that stuff means nothing. It really doesn't. If you don't have a business plan or proposal, because not all will want a grant proposal. A grant proposal is when you're seeking a certain amount of money and you already have something built. Your grant, your business plan, if they already have something request and they might say, let me see your plan for your business. And they just want to give you money to help you expand or whatever like that. So it's definitely still helpful to have that business plan. OK, but we still got to make sure we have it. It doesn't matter. You know, it's not just one and done. If you want, if you think you're going to look for grants, that's just going to say, put your LLC in your EIN and that's it. There are stuff out there that just requires the bare minimum, but you like thousands and thousands of others are in line for that same grant. Anything that's effortless, the line is, is long. You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy. So of course, a lot of people is going to get in the line of easy. Why wouldn't it? You know what I mean? So things that require effort, are, are the greatest gifts, are the greatest rewards. Those are the ones that will give you the best results, the ones that require effort. And those are some of the times the ones that people stay away from, the ones that require effort. So I definitely want you to think about your mission statement. If you don't have a business plan, download the template that's inside the fully funded group. Start filling in the templates, just filling in the blanks. It's a real easy template to fill out. If you need help, we'll schedule something for a later time. Now, one of the things I want to look at real quick before I let you go is just some of the things that this quick list of some of the things that if you are a nonprofit, because I have a few nonprofits here, and if you are a nonprofit, some of the things that grant funders may ask you for. So here's a list of some of the things that they may ask you for. Um, your EIN, your DUNS number. Your DUNS is like your, your business's credit. So if you go on DUNS.com, if you have not as a business, please make sure that you go on DNB.com, find your business, because it'll say get a DUNS number. If you haven't already written yours down or already been working with your DUNS number, it's, it's connected to your business's credit. So just like we have Experian Equifax, 
we have your DUNS report and your NAV report. And that is for your business's spending. So anytime you put your EIN anywhere, it's reported on your DUNS, okay? Your 501c3 determination letter, they'll ask for that. Um, that's always able to be found for free on the IRS website. Your current form W-9. So now whether you are getting paid from the IRS or getting paid from a company, some companies will ask that you fill out a W-9 form. If they're about to give you significant amount of money, a oh, couple hundred dollars, they may say, can you fill out a W-9 form? One of the benefits of a W-9 form is you can actually put, and that's for profit or nonprofit, you can actually put your EIN in your business or you can put your social. So you can put you can put that you're getting paid either way on a W-9. Um, your form 990 postcard. So if you are a public nonprofit, not a private, you will have a 990 postcard. Only publics are able to file on the IRS website and file an e-card every single year. Private nonprofits have to file taxes. What's the difference between a public and a private nonprofit, Shay? A public nonprofit is a school. The, the public nonprofit says, I'm going to get most of my donations from the government or from 100% donations. I'm, I'm a school, I'm, I'm, I'm funded, that's where I get my money from. A private nonprofit is a hospital. They can charge you $47 for an aspirin. They can, Miss, Miss John uh, Dickerson can donate a whole wing, but they still can't turn anybody away. An actual NFL is a nonprofit. A lot of people don't know that. Um, they are a private. So you can be either one. They are, they both have different, uh, different tax write-offs because a private foundation is not 100% tax deductible. And you have to file taxes every year. Um, your current audit, if you're a 501c3, current professional resume. Believe it or not, a lot of grants will ask you for a resume. You might say, I am not working for nobody, Shay. I've been on my own for a minute. Doesn't matter. They want a professional resume. Whatever you've been doing in your business, you need to spell it out in a resume as if it was like a job. So when I've been applying for grants, I had to apply for I had to put in a resume of the businesses that I've done in the last few years and what I've done for those businesses, just like when I worked for a job, but they wanted a professional resume because they wanted to know how the owner of this purse, this company was built, how, what kind of experience did they have to run this company? Uh, current logo. If you have a logo, they want your organizational 12 month budget. If you have the business plan, there's a link in there to help you with that. 12 months, they want to see that. Cyber grants login. So if it's cyber grants or grants.gov, they want your login if you're a nonprofit. Grants.gov login. Uh, any accomplishments they want to know. They want an explanation of what the funds are going to be used for if they're awarded to you. They want three obstacles that you faced in business, that you've been in business. If you were a COVID-19 business, they wanted to know how you were impacted. They wanted exactly a, a bio for your executive director, founder, or owner. A headshot, if possible. A one to two minute video describing yourself and your business. The videos are helpful and I have had a few grants actually ask for the video. Financial statements could be bank statements, things like that, a business plan, and a grant proposal, if you have one. But you see, the business plan was a must-have, but the grant proposal was a if you had one. So these are one of the things that's in the list that can come up in any of these applications that you fill out. So if, if a grant writer or somebody is even writing for you, they're just plugging and playing on this information. And if they haven't asked you for any of this stuff, then they're really not really trying to win you any money. They're just adding you to a list of thousands of people and taking your money. So again, tonight is our time to do our uh, mission statement. To do our mission statement. Absolutely, absolutely. I have, let me look at this thing. Hold on. Does anybody have any questions? No 
No questions. Hold up, y'all. Okay, so it looks like from what I had, but I might, I'm a double check. I just had two people, well, three people, which was Leyland Price, Latasha Collins, and Shell Massey um, with engagement to actually win the bonus, which was the eligibility criteria checklist. So those were the three winners of the next document. And I'm looking. I need you guys to be engaged so we can get this thing popping. We got to look for some. Because what I'm going to do next after this is I'm going to look for grants for quite a few of you. But you guys need to have some of your stuff ready. Luckily, Dr. Price, you are already ready. So this is going to be easy for you. Oh, you guys. What's I got going on? Thank you, Rebecca. Y'all guys are just working it. Y'all just working it, man. <laughs> all right, you guys. I love y'all. Y'all is all right. Y'all is all right. Right. Hold on, I'm trying to find it. Okay. All right, so we got any questions? Yes, Dr. Price. Wait a minute, you're still on mute. Hold on, let me let me see. I tried to unmute you. You got to unmute yourself. There you go. I just um, paid the $10 for the uh, cheat sheet. I just did it. All right. Cool. You should got the instant download. Oh, okay. So this session now. Uh, awesome. Thank you for the um, one um, young lady, uh, Miss Rebecca. Thank you so much for putting the link in there. Okay. I appreciate it. And then, um, so quick question. Yeah. So for the Don's number, mm -hmm. okay. So you know I have the um, you know the Sam .gov account, and then mm -hmm. I guess I gotta go to um dnb .com to do yeah, my. This can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you go right here to Dunsandbreads .com. Hold on, let me um get this out the way. And then right here it says Dunn's number. Okay. And you'll go you'll start first with look up the Dunn's number. Because okay. you want to if you have an EIN, 90% of the time they've already yeah. actually uh did your Dunn's number for you. Okay. And then if if not, then you'll just have to get a Dunn's number. Now in this process, they may ask you to upload your LLC and your EIN, and they also may ask you to know your NAICS code. So remember, we got our next codes yesterday. Make sure that yes. you have that. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then next question. Um, 
the small business certification requirements. Is it we could put the link in the chat because I want to look over the application. Okay, so oh. let's see. Wait a minute, hold Please. on. Yeah. Because I want to make sure I have the right. So we got now if you go to let's see. Right, yeah. Business 911's business uh, certifications. Right. I went there. If you go to let's see. Uh, Let me scroll SBA down. Um, um, MBE, SBE. Let's right. see with their requirements. Okay. So we got um, their basic requirements, meet the size standards, maintain compliance. We see, remember we talked about it, you got to have your SAM number with them, yes. your NAICS codes. Okay. The crazy thing is for them, for, for them, you consider small when you got less than 500 employees. What in the world? Like, I must be micro, 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 micro. Like, that's crazy. All right. <laughs> Said, like so these you can jump right on now and just actually log in and, and go through the process. Okay, can you um SBA, okay. you know, get certified, click this and go through it. Since you already have your SBA stuff, I mean your SAM.gov. Yes. And I'm a matter of fact, let me um put this in the link. Hold okay, on. thank you, because I'm working on that um as one of my home consignments. Okay. And then um now that I got the um the cheat sheet, I'm going to um do the assignment from yesterday. Thank you so much. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, so, that's in there for you to do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I need you off the mic. I need you on the mic, Sarah. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me see. I'm asking to unmute. I'm clicking the button. There you go. No. Okay. Hi. Um, I was having trouble trying to find my next code because I'm, I believe I'm in the industry of hospitality because I have an Airbnb, but nothing would come up under like short-term rentals or anything like that. Well, I'm thinking, so you're going to have to do like either straight rentals or straight hospitality when it comes to... Uh, what about accommodations? Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Hold on. All right, I spelled that all wrong. Hold on. It's okay. Okay, so we got skiing facilities, all other amusement, recreation, which is nude. Look, they got nudist camps, ski lodges, fitness spas, outline reservations. So let me see. I wonder because they probably, let me see. Let me see. Let's see what comes under like hotels or if something else falls under that. Hotels except casinos, casino hotels, casinos. Mm. So they only got these schools here. Well, they were high school. Okay. 
Um, because I pulled up Hostels, host, I forget how they said, pronounce it, but it's like a Holiday Inn. Hostels, like it's like a hotel, it's lodging. Yeah. Uh, Sam engaging private. So it's, sh it's short term lodging, but it's not hotel, motel, and not bed and breakfast. Guest houses, tourist homes, housekeeping cabins, hostels. Providing short-term lodging in facilities known as without a casino premise, providing short-term lodging in facilities as hotels, blah, 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 blah. Operation recreational, guest house, housekeeping cabins, tourist homes, or either tourist homes. You see how they got up here, 72, yeah. 119? That's pretty much for all of them then. It will okay. cover them for all, the 721, 199, that works. Yeah. Um, I actually had some information to pass on to um, Dr. Price. Um, okay. I actually live in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and I work for the um, York County government under the um, entity of the their solicitor's office. And I actually have some information on one of the councilmen if he needs like a name and number. Okay. All right now, you never know. I don't know if he can hear me or not. <laughs> He's saying something. I see this okay. finger go up. I mean, it's good. I think it's good. Okay, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does he want me to say the, the, the name and the number? Because it's showing muted on his end, so I can't hear him. Can you put it in the chat message to him? Because you can message yeah. him in the chat directly to him. Okay. Thank you, Tara. You, you're welcome. <laughs> He's saying thank you, too. He said, thank you, Tara. I can read his lips. <laughs> I don't know what in the world. Hey, Coach Jen. She got her nursing scrubs in. Nurse Jen is on the job, y'all. All right, guys. I ain't going to hold you up. I know it's a Saturday. I'll put this recording in the chat. Hopefully, you guys learned something from this. Don't forget your mission statements. And... um. This is day two. We got to get closer to the money, and we got to make. And this is the thing: we also can't be afraid to do our taxes, y'all. I know that's something that we've been kind of like, you know, we don't like to do. You know what I'm saying? Because it seems like a lot, and you know. But um, we, as a business, we have to do our taxes every year because a lot of the grants are going to want to see your tax returns, and if you don't have business tax returns. They're going to want to see your personal tax returns for two years. So a lot of businesses ask for tax returns, even in the grants, even if the owner doesn't have business, they want personal. So you're not you're not privy, even if you don't have yours. Just be mindful of that. And going forward, this is a little hint because we're going into a new year, a little, a little nugget. If you want to come out of you having to do your personal taxes, change your LLC into an incorporation this year. Scale up and rechange your, convert your LLC. The benefit of that LLC when you got started was to have all these, um, the pass through taxation, allowing you to write off everything that you possibly could. And you can say that, that was fine in the beginning because you didn't want to pay taxes and all that kind of stuff. But for the long game, it doesn't help that you write off everything. It doesn't help that your bottom line is zero, not for the long game. And when you do your uh, taxes as an LLC, you always have to do your taxes with your personal taxes. You always have to have your personal taxes done and then a Schedule C inside your personal taxes. Versus if you're a corporation, you can just give your business taxes to a tax professional and they can do them and you do your personal when you do your personal. But until you, as long as you're an LLC, it's limited liability, just like it says, and you'll always have to do your personal and your regular taxes together. So if you're somebody who is receiving Social Security, food stamps, any of the above, all of that is always going to work hand in hand. So if you want to ever take yourself away from that and only get whatever you decide to pay yourself or give yourself from your company, you want to convert and come up out of that LLC at some point. That is just a stepping stone. There's nothing wrong with it in the beginning, but we want to grow up out of it. A lot of companies as well and lenders when you grow, will not want to be lending to an LLC because the owner is really the brunt of that LLC. 
Okay. I'm trying to unmute you. I try. I press the button. Unmute you. Click your button. I did. <laughs> okay. So how do you best determine if you want to do come from an LLC? How do you determine if you want to do a C Corp or S Corp? Well, What's you can always be an S Corp or C Corp as an LLC because those are taxations. Those are something that you go to your tax professional and say, hey, file me a 2553 form. I want to be taxed as a C-Corp. I want to be taxed as an S-Corp. That's a taxation. So you still are who you are, even though you chose to be taxed that way. Now, when you, I'm saying take the LLC and become a corporation. Okay. And even as a corporation, then you still say, I want to be taxed as a C-Corp, S-Corp. That's still a taxation, but you are a corporation. The downside to becoming a corporation is that you're going to be taxed twice. I hate to say it. If you make a hundred thousand and you have forty thousand in expenses, they're going to tax you on the hundred thousand and they're going to tax you on the sixty thousand that's left outside of your expenses. Where an LLC is only going to tax you on the sixty. They're not going to tax you on the first hundred. They're going to let you run all your expenses through and write off as much as you can and only tax you on the money that's left. That's the that's and that's just how it goes. But it, it's one of those things that it get it once you write off everything you're going to write off. Whoever got the money, if it went to a couple of different owners, then those owners have to deal with the tax of what they received. But the the corporation, it just is separate. It just so separates you from your business once you're a corporation. It's a whole other animal, and it's cheaper yearly. So if you're paying $200 in the state of North Carolina every single year for LLC, it's only $26 every year to have an incorporation. But you're just taxed twice. You are taxed twice. But when it comes to funding, when it comes to loan money, when it comes to credit, they, they feel you're a lot more solid as a corporation than they do as an LLC. Okay, thank you. Because it's a corporation versus an independent person that just took a little bit extra uh, insurance to be to play business. Because that's why it's called limited liability. Whereas a corporation, there's no liability. It's whole. It's totally separate from you. So that just takes you totally out. It takes you totally business. out. It's of just your business and your it's personal right. your person. Absolutely. We're good. Okay. Well, I have another question. Yeah. So I started the hub certification. Okay, good. They ask for a whole lot. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, so I need some help. <laughs> yes, they do. They are the historically underutilized business. They emailed so me a laundry list. Right, so here go the hub zone certification that's on my website. So here go the checklist. There is a SAM.gov. There is a certification sheet. There is a lease. There's a utility bill. There's quite a few things. So what if you don't have a lease? What if you don't have a utility bill? But you have to because see the, the hub zone is you saying not you. But you're saying I opened up a business in a location dwelling or something that is in a low income or something uh, location. You're mm -hmm. actually talking about location. So you got to prove location oh, okay. because that's what the whole hub zone is about. It's about location versus you as the business. It's about where the business sits mm -hmm. and where the business operates. Okay. So if you're saying Cause like even with with me, I had I applied for hub zone. Not only mm -hmm. did I had applied that I'm in a low income and a um, minority area, I had to prove that I even lived in a low income minority area. I couldn't put a I couldn't be a rich person putting a business in a low income area, but I'm somewhere living high off the hog and I'm applying for hub zone. They wouldn't have it. So you have the business. So the location of the business bill not the location where you live or both well both if you're going to apply for hub zone because hub zone is going to ask you 
the business and they're going to ask you the owner too where you live yeah cause the, a lot of it i understood but i, I that part i was like I oh don't... yeah they don't they don't want people to get the benefits of putting stuff in a low income and you just doing it just to get the money and get you still yeah. living high off the hog you know what I'm saying? They want all they want low income to get benefits for being low income. You know what I'm saying? So both you know, you have to be an owner who lives low income or minority or whatever as well. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's there's benefits to you putting it in that location. There's tax benefits, there's there's grant money out there for hub zone benefits. It opens up a portal. Once you become a hub zone, they'll start emailing you stuff telling you what grants are available for hub zone and businesses in your area, even to the city has funding for hub zone businesses and stuff like that, because it's about, it's about the location. Yeah. I had, I had a, a company reach out to me um, to do business with, you know, for the janitorial business. And that was the first thing he asked, are you, um, do you have the hub zone certification? Mm -hmm. And that's what made me like, let me go ahead and apply for this. And then when I got that back, I was like, er, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But even here, yeah, they have you provide your lease for your apartment, then provide your lease. If you have to get a lease from a office depot or whatever and create a lease, and if you can get one or whatever, whatever you can bring to the table to make it work, then bring it to the table. Because it's worth getting. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And, and they don't care about if you're working out your home and all that kind of stuff. They don't care about that. They just want the documentation. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling. I know. He has I'm to push, push the mute when you push Okay, the there you mute, go. He has to push the mute button. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, question. Um, so for the small, so I could apply for the small business certification and the minority business. So you could do three. You can actually do AA certification. It's called AA, which is another small business, what gets you a lot of um procurement and funding with the government. AA is a good certification on it's on my website as well. Um, and AA is it's designed to help create equal opportunities for small business owners who are socially, economically disadvantaged. The program awards at least five percent of contracted dollars for AA businesses uh, and allow them to compete for different contracts that other. So it puts you in a pot and puts you in in a in a place that normally you probably wouldn't get in. You know what I'm saying? And kind of like equal opportunity bidding and partnering put you in a little group. So I, I would say do the AA certification. Okay. I would say do the um, SBE, do those two to start. Okay. And I'm only going to say this because the minority certification is not done through the SBA. They're going to link you out to a municipal, uh, municipal or whatever their name is, group. Their fee is $400. They have a very high cost for that black, for the minority certification. It sucks, but they have a $400 fee. It does open up doors, so I say get that up, it, down the line, and you'll have to have your original birth certificate. It's so many documents. I have the list on our website that you have to have. You think those lists are something. They're, that list is five times heavier because you got to have proof that you're black. You got to have stuff from the bank, a signature card. So if you don't have a signature card, everybody make sure to put in your arsenal a signature card. The average person doesn't even know what a signature card is because that is an actual you. piece of paper that the bank will give you saying that you are the authorized user that can tell that take money and put money in the account. It's not even a little card. You have to ask your bank for a signature card. So when it comes to those funds, they want to legally know that you're the person just because you got bank statements don't mean you're the person just because you got the card itself don't mean you're the person. The signature card is what authorizes you to say, this is my account. This is my bank account. So they're going to want that. They want car, uh, names of people inside the bank. They want names of three customers. They want, it's, it's a lot. And like for me, I'm from Jersey. My bank account didn't have my ethnicity on it. So I had to provide my mother's death certificate. Because my, you know, so you got to really look at that. So it's nothing wrong with it. I'm not trying to 
to dirt to deter anybody from doing it. Just make sure I would say that at least get the other ones out the way first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then tackle that one. You know what I mean? Because that'll help you get some things, some papers together. You know what I mean? Before you tackle that minority one. Because that so minority what's one the, is a lot. What's the ones that you can get just with the SAMs? I mean, that would be the your documentation. Um, SBE and your AA. SBE and what? AA. AA, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me put this link in the, in the chat too. All right, now put this link to this page in the chat. Okay. You're welcome. Because it has a checklist on the side. I got to update this too, but yeah. Because I even have the checklist for the minority enterprise. But yeah, so just let me know. So you guys good? I want to hold you guys up. Yes, thank this you. Is... All right. I, I got you. There you go. Yeah. I hear you now. Thank you. You, you. you heard my feelings. You got to be thinking I talk too much. Oh, never, <laughs> never, never. I'm going to start crying like a little baby. <laughs> Absolutely. No, thank you. You're welcome, Rebecca. Never. I be, I welcome the questions. Because at first I was just going to do a recording and just um, put the recording in. And I was like, no, some people may pop on here live and, and, and want some questions answered. I'm going to do it live because it's Saturday. I figure maybe you never know. It's Saturday. Yeah. Oh, like, plus, it's getting a little cold out there. Listen, listen, I'm always grinding because I'm trying to get ready for my next year. You know what I'm saying? So Yes. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm I'm to to like, sure. yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's, Come on, ladies. You got to feel me on this. Come on. You got to feel me. Come <laughs> on. You got to be with me. 2024 yeah. is going to be that year. Yes. Okay, and just I'm go so ahead proud and of you already applying for grants, Mr. Dr. Price. I'm, I don't know what to do. You on the move. That's what I'm talking about. It's your fault. That's hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. So we got to get the mission statement together. And I want you guys to even play with it. Google some grants. If you say, hey, I want to go right here online and Google. So, like she said, like for instance, um, Shell was in the cleaning business. Google clean Google grants for janitorial business. And see what pop up. Let's see what pops up. Oh, I didn't even put that in the right place. Did I? Hold on. Okay, so what pops up? So they, when I pull that up, grants for janitorial business, grant for women, no strings attached, USA funding. So this is one of the sites right here, and this has nothing to do with grants, but NAV, NAV needs to be you guys' best friend. It's going to help you with your business's credit, everything. NAV is my business's best friend, I'm trying to tell you, um, because that's the creme de la creme of like where your business lies, tells you where it stands, what you should apply for as far as funding and credit goes for your business. Um, let me say you got grant writers, usgrants.org. Somebody did a video, small business cleaning grants. So you can look at that video, how to get grants for a cleaning business. EPA. This is the thing about that. It should be probably lots of grants on this cleaning business side because they have clients, they have grants and eco, eco and friendly and you know, health conscious and all that kind of stuff. So just to be even upgrading to that space will probably be a, a way to get funding. Like if you are just a regular general cleaning, but you wanted to go into eco-friendly and do this and do that, there will probably be a lot of funding in that space. Um, startup grants, we fund great ideas. Uh, let's see. Uh, roll my cleaning company, stop stressing. Cleanup grants and funding. This one is from United States Environmental Protection Agency. So they have grants for cleanup and funding. So here you go one for, for that. So if I, and I would probably look for grants for computer. I, I mean, kind of Google and 
I would scroll down. So when it comes to everything that's going to be here at your top, I would never look at these first ones at the top. I would always just scroll down, scroll down, and kind of look at some of the things that are at the bottom. Because um, some of the things that are at the top are going to be some sponsored ads and things that people are trying to sell you. Okay. So at least kind of, this is the thing. I want, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bonus homework. Find me at least two to three links of some grant links. Like say some of these things that you thought were interesting. And I'll go down the rabbit hole and I'll look into them for you. And I'll see if it's something that you should apply for. Okay. But you need to take the look. So you can Google. You see, and see here when I put grants for janitorial, and I scroll down, this is City Charlotte Grants. And this is Foundation for the Carolinas because they have this Beyond Charlotte grant. So this would have been one that we could have pulled up for here. They'll have another one, I think, December, January. This is a great grant to apply for. And this is one of those grants that give you money and then tell you to create what you want to spend it for. And this is a private industry grant. Remember I was talking about private and public? This city, this Charlotte City Grants is a private. Now, the this is how this works. It Depending on where you're located, your, your Google is only going to show you grants that is in your region because your computer is programmed to give you things in your zip code. So if you want things that are U.S.-based all over the world, other cities, you're going to have to actually put that in the search because otherwise it's going to give you the ones that are in your city, which is good and fine. If that's what you find, let's look them up. Let's see if it's something that you can use and we'll look at them on our next slide tomorrow. So um, quick question, does that grant requires a business plan? This one here did, well, this one didn't, but it did um, require for you to have a clear explanation of what you wanted to sit the, um, spend the money for. Okay. So we had quite a few people at our office get this grant because um, mm -hmm. we were doing them at our center. And, and see, it tells you, because it answers your questions, you know, they picked at random. Um, it only had us have financials as to tax returns was asked, um, what kind of impact that you make on the city, what... Um, what would you do with the money? It had us provide links of where we were going to purchase the stuff from, um, the prices of the stuff, um, how we seen the stuff making us money. It has some details about the stuff, but um, a lot of people got it. If you had a clear plan, and the thing of it is, is quite a few of my uh, people that want it uh, from the center, so they get the information from their business plan. They just took it from their business plan. But those are great. If you have a business and you're just focused on specific stuff, you can pull it from your plan. I got too many things on my services I offer for me to have something like that. But for somebody who is one tunnel vision service type business, then your, your business plan probably can get it all done for you. But they did require you to have the information. But you didn't have to have a business plan. Not at all. Okay. But you did have to have a plan for sure. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Shay. For sure. So That's definitely really look around. Look at the little deadlines and the things that they have. You know, you do. Look on Hello Alice and all these different things. What certification should we apply for the SBA, SBE? So it's only the SBE. Because the SBA is where you get it from. But it's only SBE. It's called a Small Business Enterprise. Or it's either called an AA. It's two of them. AA and Small Business Enterprise that you should be applying for. And you're going to go to the SBA to get it. All right, then. All right. Good night. You guys have a good night. Have a happy Saturday. Y'all be you safe too. and enjoy. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ms. Tyler, again. You're welcome. Okay. You good? Okay. Have a good night. Thank you, too. You, too.